Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening team. I hope you and your family are doing well and safe in these challenging times. Today, we are going to be talking about how we transform telcos into a cognitive enterprise leveraging artificial intelligence, machine learning, and intelligent workflows. Before we dive into the topic, I'll introduce myself and my colleagues will introduce themselves. My name is Ut Paul and I am the VP and Innovation Leader in IBM for Telco Media and Entertainment Industry. Over to you, Satish. Um, my name is Satish Saragopan. I'm an uh, associate partner at IBM, working on telecom network operations and cognitive services in the uh, telecom industry. Hi, I'm Matthews Thomas. I'm the lead architect for IBM's Telecom and Media Labs. Thank you, Satish and Matthews. Let's move on to the next slide, please. Team, in IBM, we look at each and every problem from a client standpoint. And our industry, our clients are going through massive changes and transformation as we speak in the telco industry. Looking at it from a framework standpoint, there are three strategic imperatives, digital transformation, network and IT agility, and enterprise transformation. When you look at digital transformation, the problems that they're facing in terms of greater personalization, ability to solve customers' problems, reducing wait times at the contact center, we have created use cases which help solve those problems. For example, the very first use case that you see on the left, customer care, employee care, agent assist, are tailored to solve those digital engagement challenges. The second one, which is enterprise transformation. How do we reduce the cost? How do we ensure that the legacy systems are modernized? How do we ensure for the clients that the amount of time and effort that is required to maintain those systems can be taken to the next level? And we leverage that using our cloud pack for data solution, as well as our cognitive procurement maestro solution, which helps in optimizing the time effort on the spend and products. The third one that I mentioned is network and IT agility. And that's where we will be focusing on today with use cases tied to that particular strategic imperative. Moving to the next slide. The use cases on cognitive field service advisor, cognitive network operations, and how do you take the knock to the next level through our cognitive service operations are the key focus areas where AI, machine learning, and intelligent operations help solve those problems faster, better, quicker, giving greater digital personalized experience, but at the same time, also reducing the cost. And we measure each of those through industry KPIs. Over to you, Satish. Thank you, Udpal. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching from. So on this particular slide, what I would like to start off is by briefly describing our vision for the operations of the telco service provider of the future, right? especially with 5G, edge, and IoT technologies. Right? With the scale and complexity of these networks, we need extreme automation, brutal automation, driven by artificial intelligence and machine learning. Humans will just not be able to uh, keep up with the complexity and the volume of data generated by these technologies. Right? So uh, the pattern that we are outlined here is a cognitive solution much like the human with three core concepts, 
right? The nervous system, the brain, and the limbs. So the analytical systems that you see on the left are like the nervous system to sense what's happening with the network, service, and customer experience. The cognitive component that you see in the middle is like the brain, and it evaluates the anomaly and determines and recommends the right course of action, right? And the automation component that you see on the right are like the arms and legs that execute the commands that is generated by the cognitive system. So with all of this, this helps us to enable a solution that is cognitive so that it understands what's going on, predictive to make you more proactive and help prevent problems before they become major issues. And a self-learning, self-continuously uh, learning, improving solution and that is automated through end-to-end -end automation. So we will see a couple of use cases to explain this concept. So over to the next slide. So this use case, right? It's called the Cognitive Field Services Advisor. This is very critical for the telecom service providers, especially the wireless service providers and cell tower companies that manage thousands of cell towers and many data centers and customer equipment. Right? When there is an issue that with the cell towers or other network equipment on the field or on the customer premises, typically a technician is dispatched. Right? Many a times it could be an issue that the technician has not solved before or they do not have the full knowledge on the solution or they may not have the right parts and tools for the job. And this leads to repeat dispatches, which increases operational expenses for the telco company. With the cognitive solution, we're able to prepare the technician for the job by recommending the right parts and tools, advice on the best solution, and even access to tutorials and um, based on cognitive search and providing the right advice to solve this problem. And this has significant business benefits by improving the first time to repair, improving time to resolve, reducing transfers, uh, and, and all of those types of handoffs, right? So it has significant benefits. And we look at the technical solution to this uh, use case on the next slide. So going to the next slide. So here on this slide, you can see that the solution uses a wide variety of data, such as like historical problems, if this has happened before, historical work orders, uh, technical documents about the problem, vendor documentation, other methods and procedures, other chat history, if there's been conversations happening in the past. And you use all of this data to train the Watson AI ML models, and it uses natural language processing, natural language understanding to understand these documentations and understands the problems and associated resolutions to make the right recommendations. Right? So uh, as you can see, it uses both structured, unstructured data, goes through a lot of training and modeling. And based on that, it can provide the right recommendations to resolve this problem. So that's how the uh, solution is built from behind the scenes. Okay, going to the next slide. So this is another use case. And this is another critical use case for the telco service provider, right? This is for the network operation center. The solution here provides various capabilities for predictive analytics to understand anomalies, advice on the best solution again, and either helping the technician, walking them through the solution, or integrating it through the robotic process automation tools to provide a full closed loop end-to-end -end automation. We also have support for Q&A through Watson Assistant type solutions where in real time, the technician can ask for advice. So rather than uh, talk, uh, talking to a tier two or escalating, they'll be able to converse with Watson, get the right advice and help resolve this issue. The, and this has significant benefits as well in trying to help the technicians with reducing the mean time to repair, helping with SLA compliance, keeping the network uptime high, and reduce operational expenses. So on the next slide, I'll go into describing the technical solution behind this. Okay. So here, as you can see, we're feeding a wide variety of both structured and unstructured data, right? And these data, they, this is ingested and curated and fed into machine learning models that can understand the data and detect anomalies in the network. And it can also predict before there may, the major outages or major issues happen on the network. And these anomalies are then fed into the cognitive engine, which now has all of this knowledge of how to resolve these problems. It maps the, it understands the symptoms and provides the right recommendation. And there's modeling behind this based on, again, unstructured information with vendor documentation, methods and procedures. And that is fed into the automation tools. And these automation tools are able to execute the actions 
provided by the cognitive engine, right? And, and this leads to a full closed loop operations. So all the way from detecting the problem, understanding what the best resolutions are, feeding into the automation tool to be able to orchestrate the end-to-end -end solution. So this is what we call as a closed loop. And with this level of automation, this is how we'll be able to manage large complex networks, especially with the types that 5G, Edge and IoT is gonna to bring to us. So I think that's a good segue for me to now hand it over to Matthew, so we can explain the closed loop operations and present us with the demo, okay? And we'll take questions at the end of it. Thank you, over to you, Matthew. Thank you, Satish. So I will focus on just a very specific aspects of the closed loop automation. And the idea would be that you have something running in your network and something goes wrong with it. A very simple way would be when something goes wrong with it, an engineer comes and fixes it. The other option would be you detect something relatively straightforward and there's a little, a small feedback loop that goes back and says, okay, fix this problem. It could just be a script or something along those lines. Um, this would uh, apply through your virtual network functions or, or other components. Then the same thing could apply to your infrastructure where an issue of some sort happens. And what we can do is we can make it a bit more sophisticated and we can start doing some predictive anal analytics as to some, whether or not something could go wrong. And again, that's another loop. We could make things even much more uh, sophisticated where we actually go ahead and start detecting the issue and then we go ahead and uh, automatically run some testing and diagnostics on the back end, use our AI system to come up with a solution and then implement the solution. So th th the purpose of this is to just say, say, look, there are multiple uh, closed loops that are possible. It depends on how sophisticated you want it to be, but AI and analytics is relevant the further up you go the chain. So let's go ahead and take a look at a specific implementation that we have done. And um, what I will be showing you here is a video just because of the lack of time, but these are engagements that we've done with customers and we have uh, running uh, in, in our labs within IBM. So what we have done is we've deployed a full 5G network all the way from the devices that run. And for those of you who are familiar with 5G, you know we have the VRAN, the 5G core and the different components running in here. What we also have running uh, are the different backend BSS and OSS systems that make it possible to manage everything. These will of course be running at different um, locations. Some of them will be running on the edge. In, uh, some of them will be running in what we in telco would call the, the core network. And then uh, these could be running in the data center. So they'll all be placed in different areas. And Integrating all of this is what we call the transport layer. So as traffic comes through, for example, from your device, it'll go through the radio heads, through the v VDU, but all of that is managed by this specific layer. So that is at a, at a very high level what our infrastructure is. Now, what I'm going to show is how we're going to use AI and analytics to solve a very specific issue. So uh, Satish talked about the uh, cognitive network operations piece, and we're going to show how one can use automation to resolve issues with minimal interventions from a human being. So let's suppose something goes wrong with your transport layer. That's the layer through which the, tra the tra network traffic is going. And uh, what happens is, you know, if we didn't have the solution in place, you'd probably, be looking at the logs, you'd probably have an engineer then come and try to fix it. They'll have to look at a whole sort of different areas. They don't even know if this problem is going to recur, recur again. And so what we're able to do with AI is we're able to look at this. We're able to analyze all the logs. We have a predictive insights and analytics tool that is constantly monitoring, monitoring and managing and trying to make uh, decisions as to what the next step should be. We have the operation services management that is looking at it from an overall end-to-end, -end, how are our, our different services running? And then we also have our cognitive AI piece right over here that will go ahead and does the automation. So what we've done is we have trained our systems with a whole set of manuals, uh, trouble tickets and other information. So it knows how to respond to a specific issue. So what, what you will be seeing from a demo perspective is the following. 
we will go ahead and introduce an anomaly into the network. Uh, as you can see right over here, we, uh, an anomaly is introduced into the network right over here. Uh, you see that yellow box. What will happen is the logs are constantly being monitored and sent to our predictive insights tool. The predictive insights tool using analytics uh, is able to go ahead and determine that a specific issue is going to happen if this behavior continues. And it also has additional uh, uh, AI machine lear learning models that does some root cause analysis. That then sends it off to our operation services management tool, which basically um, identifies from an event perspective that we have a specific issue that needs to be addressed. And now that we've identified the issue and done some root cause analysis, we actually need to come up with a solution to the problem. And that's where our cognitive automation system comes into play. And the cognitive automation system will then go ahead and implement the solution using our orchestration layer. So that's at a high level what you're going to see. And let's continue on with the use case. So the first step that, we, and, and we have you know different vendors that we're working with. So I just want to stress these are all live systems that we have running and available. So the first thing that we're going to do is we will go ahead and introduce an anomaly into the network. So you see right over there where it says uh, insert an anomaly. We will go ahead and insert an, an anomaly into the network. And um, once that anomaly is inserted, there will be certain actions that need to be happen. And we will see how we are using AI to resolve the specific issue once it has been uh, uh, introduce and there'll be multiple steps due to the lack of time I'm not going to go ahead and, and go through everything but what we show over here right now is we will look at the state of the network and this is just as we've introduced anomaly so it hasn't yet gotten to a state where the network has been interrupted but you see the traffic right now going through two pop nodes is taking the optimal uh, route and uh, Everything's looking good, but once that anomaly is introduced and the traffic starts, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, degrading, what you will notice is our predictive insights tool immediately identifies that we have an issue. So, and as soon as it gets sufficient uh, data, it will go ahead and identify and say, if this type of behavior continues, you are going to get an issue at this point in time. How did it know it? Well, what we've done is we took about a whole series of time, a whole set of time series data, and we trained our system. And once we trained our system, it knew what the normal and abnormal types of behaviors are. And it identifies this as an abnormal behavior, and it identifies this as an issue that needs to be addressed. And what it's also able to, it's also able to learn. And as it starts learning, and as the system moves, proceeds into the future, certain abnormal behaviors might end up being normal behaviors or certain normal behaviors might start end up being abnormal behaviors. So uh, we're able to use our, uh, the AI and the analytics to identify those sort of behaviors. Not only are we able to identify those, we're able to identify the specific metrics. This goes down to some of the root cause analysis and to say, look, these are the, th these are the specific metrics that we believe are causing an issue in, on, on the network and um, they need to be addressed. So what has happened so far is we know that there is an issue out there, okay? It has been identified before it, the issue actually happens. Uh, our, our tool is going ahead and working on, on, on resolving that specific, uh, on, on identifying and trying to figure out what the specific issues are. We can go ahead and look at a lot more details than we had before as to what those issues are. And what, what will start happening is we can see that the degradation has started happening, okay? And what will happen is what our predictive and analytics tool is identifying is that this behavior continues before, remember it took this disrupt. What would happen is if this continues, it's actually going to take a much uh, uh, route that is a whole lot worse, okay? So we know we have to fix it. But all we've done so far is we've identified that there is an issue and we, need to do some more detailed analysis as to how exactly do we resolve this issue and come to a solution. So what, what, what happens now is, and by the way, as you can see, these are all live systems that we're showing. Um, 
what happens now is we can look at a whole set of additional metrics uh, the, 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 as to how behavior is going. I just showed you one that showed you what the actual network traffic was and how the network traffic was transmit, being transmitted across devices. Uh, I suspect most of you are not uh, networking uh, gurus, so I'm just going to skip most of these, but now let's go to our AI tool. So what happens is, our remember our AI tool is invoked. And our AI tool is now able to identify, look, you've got a potential alarm that's coming up, okay? And what it does is it can go ahead and it now starts its automation process. It'll go ahead and execute a set of steps to resolve that issue. So it's really using you know, robotic process automation to go ahead and uh, we can do a drill down into that specific uh, automation. And basically it says, this is the recommendation that the AI system is doing. Go ahead and uh, request some instructions, go ahead and, and execute a certain set of steps. And um, it's basically solving that that, that core, core network issue that, that, that we said, and it's, it's going through the process of coming up with, with a resolution. And we can go into more details on the specific steps, but again, that's very network specific. But what, what I'd like to highlight over here is how did our AI system come up with these conclusions, okay? So the way it came up with these conclusions is we fed it with a set of data. So we trained it with these manuals, with these instructions. So this, and so using our natural language processing system, it went ahead, parsed these instructions, and it learned how to resolve this specific issue when it happened. And so this is a sample of the document that we fed the system with so that it could go through the training and, 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 and learning process. And, you know, again, um, for those of a networking background, you'll, 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 you'll probably this will be more of more interest, but these are some of the examples that we're able to do. Not only are we able to look at just simple text, we can look at tables, we can look at um, the actual steps. So some of these could be from uh, uh, you know trouble tickets that others have generated and said, look, this is how I resolved this specific problem when it happened. So our AI system is now able to go ahead and execute the specific steps to resolve the issue. So remember, the network is still is, is in that de degradation process. Our AI system has now gone ahead and executed a few set of steps. We're able to see some, some of, the, of, of, of the key KPIs from a dashboard perspective as to how the systems are performing. But let's go back and see what, was, uh, actually, what has actually happened to, to the act traffic that we showed earlier. So remember, it, was, it, it had gone and taken a worse route, but now we come back and what do we see? we see that it has returned back to where it was before. So basically what it has done is it has resolved the issue with no human intervention by using uh, what is available from an AI and analytics perspective. So let me just do a quick review of what you just saw because I know you, we threw a lot of stuff at you. But basically what we did was the following. We went ahead and we introduced an anomaly into our network. That was then, then we gathered all the logs. We're constantly monitoring the logs and any additional information about our network. And we fed it to our predictive insights tool to determine if the behavior as shown could potentially cause a problem in the future. The predictive insights tool is able to identify, yes, indeed, it will cause a problem. And the reason why is we trained it with a whole series of time series data and other data to identify what a potential problem could be. And we also, um, had some AI models in there that did some root cause analysis of this data to determine what the potential problem could be. Then we went ahead to our um, cognitive automation system, which was trained with a set of manuals and other information. So it basically simulated what a human being would have done. A human being uh, who was say new to the job or something would probably have looked at the manuals like I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I got, well, no, we have trained our AI system to go ahead and execute those specific steps using robotic automation. It went back to some backend system, got some additional data. Once it came up with new, what it had to be done, it would actually use our, uh, our, our uh, what we call the manual layer. It's basically what manages the underlying network. So it would go, it went ahead and made some specific changes to the network. And once the network changes were made, it went ahead, you went ahead and saw that the corrections were implemented and the network was back to the state that we wanted it to be. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Utpal, who will conclude the session. 
Thank you very much, Matthews. Uh, team, in closing, we wanted to show you the underpinnings and a high level architecture of the intelligent workflow for a cognitive AI enterprise. So as you know, or as we mentioned, the main tool to drive business outcomes is the intelligent workflow. And this particular slide shows a sample client intelligent workflow, which feeds into the data and then the data is worked through the AI platform in order to give the outcomes that we are looking for. And just going a little bit further into this particular slide, within the AI platform, you can see customer data sources on the left side, and then the AI platform, which has many capabilities and how to transform those business operations. Going one level further, into the details, when the automation and AI are integrated into the operational processes by experts that know your business, productivity is greatly enhanced and the organizations are able to benefit holistically. Both employees, customers are connected better through more insightful, intuitive, and easier to use apps on any device. The intelligent workflows are able to enhance communication and collaboration across teams throughout the ecosystem. And ultimately it generates, it comes down to generating more positive experiences for everyone while positioning teams to do greater innovation around technologies of 5G and Edge that Satish and Matthews just explained. And at the end of the day, it's all about creating exceptional customer experiences and growing the business. Thank you very much team. It was a pleasure presenting. Hope it was helpful and looking forward to connecting with you soon. Bye for now.